Hey guys, what is going on today? I am super excited. I have a buddy of mine with me. We have worked together for several years, Staten. Staten, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, what's going on? I'm actually super excited because I think I'm pretty sure I might be wrong. The last person that sat in this seat was Mike the Cop. Yes, that is correct. And I'm actually really hoping that this is how he left the seat recline. Like, nobody's moved it since then. <laughs> no, he rides like a thug. All right, so I'm actually sitting like Mike the Cop, which is actually like a super cool thing <laughs> for me personally. Guys, let me explain something to you. Last week when Mike the Cop and I went out drinking, uh, Staten was there with us. He joined us a little bit later. Uh, I think he had to work in the early part of the afternoon. And then he came out and joined us. I have never seen somebody fangirl as hard as this guy did. And I, I need to tell you, there was somebody else in CID that totally flipped out. And I forgot to mention this in the last video. So real quick, there there's a guy that I work with back in the detectives division. And he was so excited that Mike the cop was coming to town. And he was so pissed off that he wasn't going to be able to meet him. So I actually took a picture of Mike. I'll see if I can put it up on the video. Either way, Mike sat at his desk and... I didn't know this at the time, but Mike had actually drawn a few items in random places on this guy's desk. Well, I knew one of them was a dick. He drew a dick on the notepad, but he did it like four pages in, so he wasn't <laughs> going to find it right away. So the guy comes back to work. We get back to work on Monday, and I'm like, um, hey, uh, so Mike the cop left you a few Easter eggs at your desk. And he started flipping out. He's like, are you serious? Really? Really? Just for me? So anyway, he sits at his desk and the day goes on and I'm like, you know, this is going to be really shitty if he goes out to do like a follow up or something. And then he flips the page and there's a big dick right there. <laughs> so anyway, Mike draws this like huge wiener and then he he writes on it not to scale. <laughs> and for those of you that are not familiar, cops write not to scale on accident reports because we have to draw like a diagram of the intersection. So Mike put not to scale and MTC at the bottom of it. <laughs> Well, I didn't know that. I knew he drew that picture, but I did not know at the time. He left like four other love notes for this guy all around <laughs> his desk. So anyway, my point being, he was a fangirl. Staten is a fangirl. And so I'm sure he's pretty excited to be in Mike's seat right now. I am. It's reclined actually perfectly. Like I think, I think if I had the, the, the choice, I would recline it just like this. <laughs> and I think it's still a little warm too. It's just super exciting. Well, so. it's probably because he farted there. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, that'd be it. All right, guys. So today um, there was a video topic that I was going to discuss. Um, however, uh, Mike decided to beat me on the draw, and so did Daniels. Damn you both. And that is the United Airlines incident. Now, I'm, I know the video topic is going to be about the police academy, but this is something I just kind of wanted to briefly hit on um, just to kind of give, give my perspective on it. I'm not going to do an entire video like I told you guys I would in the last one. And, uh, that's just because out of respect for Mike and Daniels, I don't want to, I don't want to try copy their, their stuff. So based on the footage that I saw, ha have you actually seen the footage yet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So based on the footage that I saw having to do with that flight, my personal opinion, the first thing that comes to mind is entitlement. And the reason why entitlement comes to mind is because I think that people people have mistaken the right to travel for the right to fly. You know what I mean? And yeah. when you like you can travel anywhere you want. You can walk wherever the hell you want to. But might take you a while. Yeah, it might take you a while. Driving and flying are a privilege. Especially flying because everything's privately owned. Yeah, exactly. No, that's well, a good the, point. The airlines are privately owned. That's why United had a right to ask the guy to leave. They could have asked him to leave because they didn't like the color of his shirt. True. They bought a ticket, refund him his money. They're, they're a private company. It's regulated by the government, but they're private. And Mike the Cop actually had a really good point in the video that he did about it. What if United Airlines representative came to your house and you told him that you didn't want him there and he said, I'm not going anywhere? You as a citizen would have the right to call the police to have them removed from your property. This is no different. But I think that people mistake the right to travel as like, it's my right to fly on an airplane if I want to fly on an airplane. And then that's just, it's not the case, especially with a privately owned company like Staten just said. That video was what? 50 seconds long yeah so i mean i know i know the company put out like a little statement and everything like that but you never know exactly what happened exactly what was said beforehand what was promised to who who was supposed to be where so it's always good to keep that in the back of your mind that you're only seeing 50 seconds of what probably was i mean at least an, an hour long ordeal between overbooking the flight and asking people for who wants to be a volunteer and I wonder what they were thinking like let's just get the quiet Asian guy on, <laughs> on aisle 11 he's not gonna he's not gonna put up a fight little did they know <laughs>
All right, guys. So the topic today, let's get on that. Like I said, I, I didn't want to steal too much of the spotlight from uh, from Mike and Daniel. So um, today's topic is going to be funny stories uh, in the police academy. When when Staten came to me, he he's actually the one that came up with this idea. Um, it's it's hard for me to remember stories from a long time ago. I've forgotten a lot of stuff over the years. I've had to like kind of dig deep and make you're some. A, you're a salty old veteran now. The thing about the police academy, the police academy for the most part is kind of broken up into like phases, I guess. Um, well, some some have phases, some just go by the week, whatever. Um, but usually you're going to be doing classroom stuff um, for at least the first like five weeks or so. Um, before they have you moving on to more advanced stuff, whether it be firearms or emergency vehicle operations course or defensive tactics or building clearing or stuff like that. They want to make sure that you are able to at least get through a few tests in the police academy before they start teaching you stuff like that. I don't know about you guys in, in your academy, but with mine, like day one, you started doing PT. Yeah, and marching. And marching, yeah. So for us, uh, like the first day was, I think they started us at two miles. And like every half mile, they have you stopping to do um, like push-ups and sit-ups and stuff like that. And then you keep running. Well, by day two or three, we were running three miles every day. And we ran three miles for the entire rest of the academy. I don't I don't know about you. I, I actually got shin splints like the second week. Too. Like yep. they, they overwork you, I think, to a certain extent. Like even in boot camp with the military, like I never had shin splints or anything like that. So they basically expect you to keep up with the instructor from day one. So don't go into the police academy with the mindset that they are going to get you into shape. That is the biggest mistake that you can possibly make. It was definitely uh, when you start off, they want They kind of want to weed out the uh, the people that didn't come prepared. Being PT'd is uh, not to be mean to you or anything like that. But like you said, I got shin splints within the first two or three weeks so in the academy as i'm sure you guys can imagine with the instructors yelling at you and everything else um you, you come out with some pretty good stories and the people that you're in the academy with for the most part you tend to have a pretty strong bond with them um i personally i really don't talk to a lot of people i went to the academy with there's a few like on facebook here and there but they've kind of fallen off the map over the years i mean for god's sakes it was almost 10 years ago so um, you know, people go their own separate ways. They have their own lives, and you just kind of lose touch over time. All right, so Staten, what is one of the best and funniest memories that you have from your police academy? First of all, what year did you go to the police academy? Uh, 2013. Now, guys, another thing to keep in mind about Staten, um, he's been in the military for a long time. He's in uh, the reserve. It's the reserve now, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. And um, so, you know, we, we've both been to boot camp, military boot camp, and we've both been through the police academy. So... You know, we, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments section below and, you know, we can, we can answer those kind of questions. Uh, but anyway, this video is specifically about the police academy. So tell me, uh, tell me a funny story that you have about your experience in the police academy. Uh, well, we had two classes that went through at the same time. Both of them had about, I don't know, 40, 50 people. And I was the only one in my class that had any prior military experience at all really so i was really the only one that had any experience with marching and drilling ceremonies and calling cadence so even though i wasn't like the class president like what each class have like your little leader um i still had to call out the the cadence when we were marching and when we were running one of the only ones that i remembered from the military was the title of it was my girl's a vegetable yeah, you guys are going to hell. You realize that? Well, that, that's it's funny that you said you kind of you know took took over when it came to like the marching and stuff because I remember I, I was the only one in in our class at least I don't know about the other class but I was the only one in our group that um, had experience marching. My goal was to get everybody up to par because yeah. I wanted us all to like that's look how, really I felt good. Like that too, yeah. Yeah. So we would go into the hotel parking lot in the afternoon after class and I would teach them how to march. It was a lot of fun, except this one Irish guy in particular I'm talking about. I know you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, he would be drunk the whole time. <laughs> so like, he's the only I one. You, I bet you he was the best marcher out of everybody. It, if he was nah, drunk. Not when he got to a certain point of drunk. <laughs> so anyway, it's kind of cool that, uh, that you kind of assume that role kind of like I did. I mean, we've, we've never talked about that. So it's kind of cool that you did the same thing. It kind of sucked because the other class, like half of the class they were like prior like drill sergeants and stuff like that oh really so they would sing cadences and they sounded like awesome and right. like i didn't know the words to any of them so i actually when i got off i would have to i'd pull up youtube and i would just youtube you know running cadence or and i'd try to memorize it all right so you guys heard me mentioning just a couple minutes ago about the little irish guy that used to get drunk uh and march with us so 
I think my absolute favorite story with him, we went to the academy together. And, well, obviously, I just told you about his marching. My absolute favorite story. So, luckily, my hotel that I was staying at was, like, right around the corner from the police academy. So, I never had to shower with a bunch of dudes. I had already done that in the military. I didn't want to do it again. Um, so, I used to, like, haul ass to the hotel down the street, take a shower real quick, and then get back to class. And it somehow just always worked out where I would walk into class just before we were supposed to be there. Well, one day... Uh, I remember showering and I, I got done early, I think, or maybe they gave us a little bit more time. I don't remember, but the little Irish guy had to shower with all the other guys, a buddy, another buddy of mine that was in the, we were all part of the same, we worked for the same police department. There's like eight shower heads on the wall. He's the last one in there by himself. The little Irish guy. Yeah, I'm picturing it. Actually, it's, it's a lot funnier than you would think. So he's the last one in there and in comes a buddy of mine, I've talked about him in another video. I don't remember what nickname I gave him. Um, but anyway, this dude is like jacked up like he's on steroids, right? And he comes walking in, butt naked, swinging things around. We won't go there with what he was swinging. And he steps in between the Irish guy and his shower. Just steps right in between it. So like his ass is touching the front of the <laughs> Irish guy, right? And so the Irish guy is like, he backs off. He freaks out. And he's like wiping soap off of his eyes. He's like, what the fuck, dude? And the big jacked up guy is like, I just wanted this shower. He's like, you already had it warm for me. <laughs> so the Irish guy is just standing Shrunken there like defeated. dripping wet. Talking about showering with a bunch of dudes in the academy. One thing that for whatever reason, I don't know how, I don't know who started it, but we would always sing like the entire class. And it was like that scene in, um, what was that movie? Ain't, when they sang Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Every single time it was like that scene from like Remember the Titans where they're singing Ain't No Mountain High Enough in the locker room. And it was always like My Girl that they would sing. <laughs> and it was always like a soulful black guy that we had in the other class. And he would just it was, he would just start snapping his fingers under the shower head and everybody would just start singing. And it was every single day was, you know, after PT we're showering. That's funny. And luckily, like I, like I said, I never had to shower with the other guys. So I'm, I'm glad I was afforded the missed opportunity, if you <laughs> well, will. Yeah, you missed out. But we did. We had one person, and I talked to Staten about this a little earlier, Turns out he had the same guy. So we had this instructor in the academy, and this guy was all of what four foot twelve. Yeah. Like, he he maybe broke even, and he and threw full up, of anger. Full of anger. This guy was always pissed off, and I thought it was just because you know I mean we had both like me and Staten had been through boot camp. Like you understand it's a mind game. They're trying to mold you all that shit. I thought it was like that, but he was just genuinely pissed off. I think he had little man syndrome. Anyway, he, all throughout the academy, he would tell us these like war stories of all the things that he used to do as a police officer, right? And he would like th solve these domestics and he would get into these fights and on and on and on. Towards the end of the academy, the truth finally came out. This guy had never been anything but a university cop. I'm not downing university cops. They see their fair share of shit. But the way he was talking it up, I mean... I thought he was a cop in, like, L.A. No, hell no. no so, uh, I mean, the way... That? No, I, I knew, but, oh, I mean, oh. it was like, yeah, you know, I got into a shootout with a guy with a 50 cal the other day. And, and he was holding a baby, but I got him right yeah, between the eyes. Yeah. Like some Matrix shit. It was, uh, it was an orphan. <laughs> now, whenever you guys screwed up, did they make you, like, sprint from the classroom all yeah. the way down the street you and roll stop your... The, the, oh, stop, the stop sign? We had to roll our thumbprint, but... Uh, they, they just told us, hit the sign, and we just slapped it. Yeah, they'd always say, hit the sign, and then we'd have to sprint. It was probably, like, there and back was probably a little over a quarter mile. It wasn't that bad. But yeah, it, was it wasn't that far. But all your duty gear. Sometimes it was, like, right after you got done with a shower. Well, they'd do that on purpose. And then after you came back from lunch, that was the first thing. But they'd look for reasons to, like, make you do it. Like, oh, you know, you're pencil's not sharp enough so everybody get out hit the sign and everybody yeah. and then they sprint out of the room and then everybody's pissed off yeah. that one guy everybody hates why that the guy. fuck was your pencil not sharp they have sharpeners here tom <laughs> tom <laughs> there was nobody in my academy class named tom that i know of don't use that to try to find out our identity why couldn't you go with something more culturally diversified why not Jorge? first of all first of all congratulations on passing your detective uh, i training. appreciate it i'm just and glad not to be on call all the time. i have i have like a uh, a suggestion if i can if you're o if you're open to it your ensemble that you got going on right now okay. i think that should be your normal it looks good on you, are you i know i know people can't are see you talking you. about my camera yes for those of you i know i know you can't see him but he's got like a camera strapped to his head and he's wearing like a clown wig 
and he's wearing lipstick, which is I've never I've known you for a while, and I've never seen you to wear lipstick. Well, I like to change but things up. I'm gender fluid. Now. I think I think instead of body cams, we should all do that, and I think that would really compel witnesses to come forward. True, because they probably get a few laughs. Yeah, they'll be staring at your forehead the whole time, but they'll tell you what you want to know. <laughs> like, sir, I'm not recording you right now. I know I have a giant it's camera body cam. In my head. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get the reference. I, use, I this is a light. I use it when I go coal mining. <laughs> we had one guy in the academy. I will never forget this. He, he was a former infantry, and he had done like two or three deployments, and he. <laughs> He would get trashed every night, dude. Like, he would knock out a whole bottle of bourbon or vodka or whatever else was available. And he would get hammered at his hotel room, and then he would be into PT the next morning. You would think that he would learn his lesson because every morning at PT, halfway through, he would start throwing up all over that's, the place. That's how they do it in the infantry. I've, I've heard these stories. Like, My just, best friend's in the Army. That's, that's like a badge of honor. You get to throw up while you're... I've I've watched them and they'll run and they'll throw up while they're running and it's awesome. That's well, it just it's seems impressive. messy. It is kind of sticky, I'm sure. I, I I dude, I hate throwing up. I've never. I just drive heave. It's horrible. I can't do it, man. I hate throwing up. I will. I'll take strep throat three times over throwing up once. I hate throwing up more than anything else. What about throwing up with strep throat? Never experienced that. Thank Me God. Either. Thank God. The, the biggest thing about the police academy is like it's. It's funny and it's hard at the same time. It really doesn't get funny till afterwards. Like yeah. when you're looking, boot camp was the same way. Yeah. But it's so worth it. I mean, you're just going through all that stuff with a bunch of like people that, you know, if you can get through that stuff with a bunch of these people, you know, odds are you'll make a bunch of lifelong friends, and some of them you'll go and you'll work with later after you graduate. True. So that's that's probably the best thing about it. And I mean, I really wanted to be a cop, so I was super excited to wear a plastic gun on my hip for a while and I got to wear like an empty cuff case and stuff like that. I was living the the dream. High school Staten would have creamed his pants <laughs> if he knew like what I was doing in 2013 at the police academy. And that's the other thing about the academy guys, like you hear all these horror stories and stuff and like Staten said it's 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 very similar to military boot camp because it will get easier as you go on. And you know, for those of you that are already in incredible shape I'm sure the academy is probably not going to be that hard for you um, as far as the physical part of it goes. But everything, whether it's mental or physical, you know, you'll stop you'll stop getting punished as much. Um, the mind games will kind of slow down and stuff like that. And it really just becomes a, a very enjoyable time. And uh, like I said, it's, it's nothing like military boot camp. You cannot compare it to boot camp. Um, the instructors there most of the time have never been military training instructors or drill instructors or drill sergeants. So... You know, it's it's not as bad as the military, but it is going to be rough for a little while. Just keep your head up, and if, as long as you stick with it and, you know, you're not a dumbass and you can pass the test, then you'll be good to go. All right, guys, I'm going to cut this a little bit short today. If you guys want to see a part two, let me know. Um, I had to get Staten in the car. One thing I want to say to you guys, without Staten, Officer 401 would not be here. And the reason why I say that. Uh, none of us, neither one of us could have guessed that this ever would have happened. Staten was part of the reason why I changed police departments. And had he not done that, I would not have worked in the jurisdiction where another YouTuber was. Um, and I would not have gotten into YouTube. So I owe a lot of, uh, the success of my channel to him. Of course, I put in a lot of hard work and stuff, but it would not have, have started without me changing departments. So he is unfortunately leaving us soon. He is going elsewhere. Um, out of town to work as an officer so if you guys want to see a part two let me know and we are going to try to get that out before he makes the move because once he does make the move he's he's going to be busy i'm going to be busy it's going to be hard to, to coordinate so staten the last thing i want to say i really appreciate you joining us i appreciate you having me i feel like a celebrity <laughs> well it, i mean there's only be hundreds of thousands of people that see you but no pressure jesus should have did my hair better. For the record, the only reason he switched departments was because I was at that next department. Oh, is that what and it was? And he wanted to work with me. Is that what it was? Yeah, we were, hey man, we were a team. I actually asked to leave the shift because you came to it. Because <laughs> I was tired of you. What a dick. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, thanks again for watching. I appreciate your support. Like I said, if you want to see a part two or you have questions that maybe we can cram into part two, uh, let me know in the comments section below and we will address those next time. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon.